15. No priest, no king. Hebrews 7, 15 to 28. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament, and they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated for evermore. Hebrews 7, 15-28 this text begins by asserting, verse 15, that another priest, quote, after the similitude of Melchizedek, end quote, has of necessity arisen or been given. The Levitical priesthood was provisional because its sacrifices were types of what was to come. They sent forth atonement, but not the atoner. The old priesthood, verse 16 tells us, was made, quote, after the law of a carnal commandment, end quote, meaning that the law for the Levitical priesthood had reference to the body. There were physical and genealogical qualifications and the requirement of ceremonial purity, but Jesus Christ, who is life, does not need to meet such requirements because he is himself the standard. He is, quote, a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, verse 17. His priesthood is not from man and has no beginning or ending, nor any limitations on its efficacy. Verse 18 tells us, quote, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof, end quote. In verse 19, we are told, quote, The law made nothing perfect, end quote. But now, quote, a better hope, end quote, enables us to, quote, draw nigh unto God, end quote, the law here refers to the law of the Levitical priesthood. It does violence to the text to refer the law to the whole of the law of God. What is under discussion is the law of priesthood and sacrifice and no more. The old laws of the priesthood are now obsolete because the great high priest has come and his order is from heaven. The old law of the priesthood and of sacrifice is, quote, made nothing perfect, verse 19, because only Jesus Christ could make an efficacious atonement for us. We now have, quote, a better hope, end quote, and a sure one, and we are brought near to God by Jesus Christ, our great high priest. In verses 20 to 22, we are told that more than a proper genealogy stands behind the priesthood of Jesus Christ. We have God's oath. Psalm 110.4 is again referred to, This new priesthood is not bound by any human qualifications, nor is it at all under man's government and control. Jesus Christ is not our high priest by a, quote, carnal commandment, end quote, verse 16, literally a commandment of flesh, one limited to human and historical factors. 
The Levitical priesthood was ordained by God as an historical fact. The priesthood after the order of Melchizedek was directly given by God without reference to human precedents, controls and rules. This means that Jesus was made the surety or pledge of a better testament, verse 22. Because the renewal of the covenant is now made by the great prophet of God, the Messiah, King and God's great high priest, it is the superior covenant. Until now, there have been many priests and high priests as well in the history of the covenant people, but in every case their priesthood ended with death, verse 23. This means that all of them assumed the priesthood for a time only, whereas Jesus Christ is forever high priest. Jesus Christ, who lives forever, quote, hath an unchangeable priesthood, verse 24. A man can be a soldier for a few or for many years, but he is not born a soldier, nor is he one forever. The priesthood of Jesus Christ is not a temporary aspect of his history, but forever an essential part of his being. Verse 25 tells us, quote, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. End quote. Verses 25 to 28 give us a magnificent hymn, as it were, to Christ our High Priest. According to M. R. Vincent, quote, The idea is not intercession, but intervention. End quote. This means that Christ, in his infinite wisdom, is totally active on our behalf. Having shed his blood for us, it is nothing for him now to care for us. There are no limits on his power and activity for us. They are, quote, to the uttermost, end quote, for those who, quote, come unto God by him, end quote. The concluding clause is more than man would dare to say, quote, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. This does not mean a man-centred concern for us, but a kingdom-centred one for the people of his service. Our high priest is, quote, holy, harmless or guileless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, verse 26. He is far greater than our conceiving can grasp, for he is God the Son. Verse 27 says of Jesus Christ that he, quote, needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself, end quote. His was the great and only true sacrifice, and it ended the sacrificial system. However, as Acts 6-7 tells us, many priests became Christians and obedient ones. In time, however, some felt the need to perpetuate the sacrificial system in some fashion, and this led to the idea of an unbloody sacrifice and ultimately to the Mass. Quote, for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law maketh the Son, who is consecrated for evermore. Verse 28. The Levitical priesthood relied on infirm and limited men, but the oath, Psalm 110.4, consecrates the Son as eternal high priest. The oath of Psalm 110.4 came after the giving of the Mosaic Law and its laws for the priesthood. The implications are now clear. Hebrews began by declaring what none reading the letter would question, namely that Jesus Christ is God the Son, by whom the worlds were made, Hebrews 1.2. Psalm 102.25 is cited in Hebrews 1.10 to declare Jesus Christ the Creator King, now Hebrews goes on to declare, in effect, no priest, no king. If Jesus Christ is not your high priest, he cannot be your king. If he is not your king of righteousness or justice, he cannot be your king of peace. To go back to the temple and its high priest is to abandon their God and king. Hebrews is an uncompromising manifesto. It offered no compromises to the Hebrew church members. Its message was, quote, Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. End quote. 